Yes, it, it's at the top of the hour. Good day, colleagues, and welcome to our September ECHO session. My name is Francis Ochen from the African Society for Laboratory Medicine, and I'm delighted to be your host today. Our session will run for one hour. We will take three presentations and dive into the question and answer discussions. Kindly join the discussions through the chat room. We also do have language interpretation services. Please keep to one of either English or the French channel. Today we focus on missed opportunities in TB diagnostic cascade, looking at one initiative that addresses this and sharing some of the implementation experiences from two countries. You may be aware that in some settings, up to 10% of OPD attendees present with symptoms suggestive of TB. Therefore, a significant number of uh, presumptive cases should actually be coming from but This in most cases is not the case. We see numbers of 5% or less presumptive cases coming from the OPD. And therefore, the entire diagnostic cascade starts on a weak note. Then comes the unquantified non-interrogated losses between presumptive cases that get evaluated either through chest x-rays or lab-based procedures. Confirmed cases that get notified to the national TB programs, there is also a drop there. And then eligible cases on treatment that are subjected to follow-ups. We know that these are critical milestones in the care cascade for TB patients. This therefore further explains why in 2020, the WHO estimated that uh, of the 10 million new cases they thought were out there, only about 5.8 cases were notified to the national programs. So this again goes on to explain why optimal cascade performance requires that clinics and labs interface to ensure service continuity from identification of presumptive cases, specimen collection and transport to diagnostic testing and result reporting. So today we look at clinic lab interface continuous quality improvement, a mentorship based program and the use of a diagnostic cascade evaluation toolkit to identify, quantify, and target gaps in TB diagnostic and treatment services to maximize patients retention across the TB care cascade. Okay. In doing this colleagues, we have three presenters and two gentlemen supporting them up. First presenter will be Jami Dawson. Jami is from the TB and clinic monitoring team I mean, clinical monitoring team from the International Laboratory Branch of the Division of Global Health and TB Center for Global Health at USCDC. After Jami, we will have Abdunur Nyombi. Uh, Mr. Nyombi is a medical lab scientist from the National TB Reference Lab of the Ministry of Health here in Uganda. And then lastly, we'll have Eke Ofuche, who is an associate director with the lab services at APIN uh, Nigeria. After the three presenters, we'll have two colleagues supporting them. The first is Davis Ashaba, and lab project manager with Affinet, based in Uganda. And then the second support uh, presenter will be Stephen at J. And Stephen is the IT programmer and systems analyst with ASLM. Colleagues, join me in welcoming our presenters, and I hand it over to Jami, who will do the overview presentation. Jami, over to you. Okay, um, so I'll, let's just jump right in, into the, the presentation. Um, so in uh, Francis's opening remarks, he sort of discussed this a little bit, but um, I'm going to um, touch on it a little bit more. Um, so before I tell you, you about CLIC specifically, I just want to talk a little bit about the data and why we feel a program like CLIC is justified. So as you all know, the, um, every year the WHO releases its global TB report. And if you look over here on the left-hand side, in 2020, um, the WHO estimated that there were just under 10 million instant TB cases. Um, and as Francis mentioned, 
um, when you look at the number that were notified, only about um, just under 6 million were notified. So that's a huge um, drop off, um, what we would call a gap. And then if you look um, at the, the number of the 6 million that were tested with a molecular WHO approved rapid diagnostic test, just under 2 million. So that's another um, big drop off. And then again, going from the, the 6 million that were notified, if you look over here, you see um, just under 5 million were successfully treated. So all of these drop-offs um, is sort of where, where click comes in and the, those types of gaps that we hope to address. And when you look at the, the national data for Uganda in 2020, the, the trends are very similar to the global data. You see these big drop-offs. And um, by the way, Uganda is just the latest country that we've implemented click in. Um, Nigeria is where we piloted and they had very similar data trends as well. Okay, so so we talked about the those gaps, um, but the, and that information from the WHO it, it's really great to have. But the problem with it is that it's not granular enough. Um, you you can't really see where the bottlenecks are and and why why we're having the, um, you know the, these big drop offs. So that's where Click comes in. We try to get a little bit more granular. So we have three major objectives for Click. Um, the first one is to increase patient and speci specimen retention throughout the diagnostic cascade. Second is to increase the number of patients that receive laboratory services, diagnosis, and treatment. And then finally, um, to reduce turnaround times between the steps. So if you look over here on the left-hand side, this is um, just sort of a, a generic representation of a TB diagnostic cascade. Different um, programs and facilities you know, will have more or less steps. Um, but but you get the idea. So if, if we look at uh, each of these steps in a cascade, so let's say we had 100 patients that re were referred um, to give a specimen based on symptom identification. But of those 100, maybe only 80 actually reported and gave a specimen. That would be a drop off. Um, that would be a gap that, that Click can focus on. And you can do that for every step in the cascade. You see drop offs at every step. Okay, so what exactly is Click? There, there are two main components to Click. The first is this data collection toolkit that we call the Diagnostic Cascade Evaluation Toolkit, or DICE for short. And so throughout the presentations that you're gonna hear today, you'll, you'll hear DICE a lot. Just keep in mind, that's our data collection toolkit. And it's able to collect aggregate and patient level data um, from the registers, from the national registers. And um, after that data is collected, DICE can quantify the gaps and the strengths, um, and these are site-specific um, for each um, clinic or laboratory, and it will um, uh, show you all the drop-offs and, and show you where patient retention is an issue. And what we use the, the, these DICE assessments for, so at the beginning of the implementation period, we'll do an entry assessment, and then at the end of the implementation period, which typically is about three months, um, then we do another assessment and we compare the two. And that's one of the major ways that we can determine um, the impact of CLIC on these facilities. The, the second component of CLIC is this CQI portion or continuous quality improvement. So after we, we do the, the DICE entry assessment, we invite participants from all of the clinics and laboratories to come to um, a couple of workshops, um, which we call learning sessions. And at these learning sessions, the participants are given um, a lot of various uh, trainings in CQI uh, and data review and use. And one of the major activities that they, they do at the first learning session is they review their own site-specific data from DICE. They, they select a gap that they wish to focus on and, and try to improve, make improvements on. And then they'll they'll develop an improvement project that focuses on that gap, and they'll also develop um, a metric that typically they will track weekly, and this helps them to monitor uh, progress with their improvement project. And hopefully, as time goes on, they they will see improvements and they will see greater retention of patients. And if they're really successful, some of the sites have been encouraged to. Um, to implement secondary or even um, tertiary improvement projects to focus on other gaps. Okay, so this is uh, just sort of a, a generic timeline for, for CLIC implementation. And 
like all things in Click, it's customizable. So this can be um, shortened or lengthened depending on the needs and the desires of the, of the various programs. Um, but so if you look from the dice entry assessment to the follow-up assessment, this is the implementation period I was I was mentioning. So we'll do do the first assessment. They'll go to learning session one where they will receive the CQI trainings, develop their improvement projects. And then we send them back to their respective facilities where, and then over the, the next couple months, they will receive um, weekly mentorship. And that can come in the form of site visits, or um, they can do it virtually either through WhatsApp or echo sessions. And then after the implementation period, we have all this data um, that leads us into this um, optional phase at the end, um, but it's highly recommended. You know, when you implement a project like this, most ministries of health are going to want some type of written report that, that outlines the, um, the results and the successes and the challenges. And but but another reason why we highly recommend this this writing workshop is um, this is also a good place to start discussing um, sustainability of click in these facilities and scale up to other sites. Um, and it's also a good place to discuss things like publication plans. Okay, um, so I'm down to my last two slides. Um, one of the very first things we do when we get on site at these um, clinics and laboratories is we ask the, the staff and the management to provide us with a, a facility walkthrough. And it, the, this walkthrough is gonna be the same path that a typical patient would take. So starting at an entry point, whether that's the ART clinic or OPD, something like that. And then we just go from station to station that a patient would, would go to. And we try to identify, you know, things like data sources, you know, what and what type of data is collected? What, you know, are there any other um, forms that need to be carried? And we also try to identify sort of intangible things that might lead to more patient loss. You know, like, do they have escorts from one station to the next? Um, is it a complicated winding path to get from one station to the next? It might make a patient give up and go home. Um, so all these things we're on the lookout for during our patient walkthrough. Okay, so we've done the walkthrough. Now it's time to abstract data. So this is my last slide. I just want to sort of explain what DICE is and give you sort of a taste of what it looks like. So as I mentioned, this is an Excel-based tool and there are various tabs in here. And um, so this tab here, this um, is uh, one of our job aids. And, you know, we think the, the success of our data abstraction um, really sort of is, is based upon how closely it resembles the national registers. So every country will go through a DICE customization phase where we'll, we will make this reg, um, the, this job aid resemble very closely the, the national register of the country we're in. And the way this works is, you know, one line in, in here represents one page of the national register. So you just count instances of whatever indicator. So on page one of the register, you, you would see that there are were 10 presumptive TB patients and you just go on down the line like that. And we abstract data from three main registers, and we do this because that allows us to cover the entire diagnostic cascade from, um, so the, the first register we abstract data from is the presumptive TB register, then we go to the laboratory register, and then finally the TB treatment register. And after all that data is entered in, it auto-populates into um, uh, an analysis tab that we have up here. And this is where you'll receive a lot of different charts and graphs and turnaround times. And it, it will really highlight, highlight the various gaps um, and strengths um, of the various uh, sites that have had this assessment. So that's all I have for the overview. Hopefully you have at least a better understanding of what Click and DICE are. And um, I'll turn it over to the country presenters and they can tell you about their experiences with Click. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jami. Uh, can we move it on to AK from Nigeria? Uh, thank you. All right. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, uh, depending on where you are. Uh, my name is AK Bufuche. I work with Epping Public Health Initiatives uh, in Nigeria. Um, today, uh, we'll be sharing our experience in the implementation of uh, tuberculosis clinic laboratory interface continuous quality improvement. Uh, um, TB click uh, for short.
So um, as an overview, we'll be looking at background introduction. Uh, we'll also be looking at the implementation approach that was used for the project implementation in Nigeria. And then uh, we'll share our um, achievements, then lessons learned and key messages. Also, as a way of introduction and background, um, at the introduction by uh, Francis and even by um, Jamie, he noted the gaps uh, that exist between um, estimated incidents uh, TB cases and then those that are notified. Um, here in Nigeria, according to WHO data of 2018, out of 400 and, uh, about 400,000 estimated incident TB cases, only as few as uh, about 100,000, you know, we are uh, notified, which represents merely 25% of the total estimated incident cases. And you can see uh, as it continues to drop, even not all this number um, had laboratory uh, results to test to confirm uh, the TB and even those that were initiated on treatment. So it was for this reason um, that uh, TB click uh, was implemented in Nigeria. Um, the project was implemented in Benue State um, with five facilities for the pilot project. Um, however, as we are trying to expand uh, in a phased approach, we are also uh, implementing currently uh, in two extra other states with 10 additional facilities. This project was implemented in collaboration with the national and state TB and HIV programs, um, as well as CDC and IRSF. So the project was funded by IRSF through uh, CDC. The major objective of the project, the first was to increase the number of persons uh, with presumptive TB that are receiving uh, timely TB testing and results. And these objectives were aimed or designed to address those gaps you know, that are identified across the TB diagnostic cascade as was uh, um, presented in my introduction overview. The second objective is to increase the number of uh, people initiated on TB treatment from among the presumptive uh, uh, TB uh, patients. And the third is, the, is to increase the number of people initiated on TB preven uh, preventive treatment with respect to those whose uh, uh, results were actually negative, especially for TB, HIV co-infected uh, patients. And then the final objective is to reduce the TB diagnostic cascade turnaround time between patient presentation and patients getting the required uh, treatment across the entire cascade. So in Nigeria, we, the approach we deployed were as follows with the timeline. This project was implemented between May 2019 and, and to August 2019. It was actually a four month uh, project. So we have pre-workshop preparations where we held engagement and the sensitization meeting with the national TB program, the national HIV program, as well as the state uh, uh, programs, including the development of adaptation of the tools that were used, both the assessment tools and the training curriculum. Then we went into obtaining baseline uh, data using the diagnostic uh, cascade evaluation uh, tool, uh, which um, Jamie mentioned and explained in full details. So with the entrance assessment to each of these facilities, we were able to obtain baseline data. And with those data, uh, um, following this, we now move into the learning sessions. Um, we held physical workshops on um, continuous quality improvement, uh, where we use the uh, DMAIC approach, uh, the DMAIC model. The DMAIC, DMAIC means um, define, uh, measure, analyze, improve, and control. So out of these five, five elements, we broke them down uh, into different workshops. So we had this a series of workshops. After each workshop was a, a technical assessment and a mentorship visit and to also support these facilities in selecting improvement projects, in monitoring the success rate of the improvement projects. And then at the end, there was a follow-up assessment um, that was used you know, to determine the level of improvement based on data, of the difference in data obtained from the um, entry assessment and the data obtained from the 
uh, baseline assessment. So this is a, a picture taken from one of the uh, CQI um, trainings. And the good thing is that it brought together uh, four um, various uh, healthcare workers uh, from different uh, departments from each facility. The TB clinic staff, um, ARUT clinic staff, the laboratory staff, and an MIE or data staff. They were all involved because of the multidisciplinary uh, approach, the team approach, the interfacing between these uh, different uh, healthcare workers so that there will be uh, a, a, a same understanding you know, of these gaps and how to address them. So at those meetings, the facilities presented their uh, uh, baseline assessment data and then um, improvement, we guided them in selecting improvement projects to address the problems identified from the baseline assessment. And uh, um, for each of these uh, workshops, we had the same uh, activity. So this was a process mapping, uh, which is one of the key uh, CQI tools uh, that we use you know, in, in identifying the actual activities across the diagnostic cascade. So from the uh, DICE uh, assessment visits, um, which involved uh, retrospective uh, data abstraction from the different uh, tools, uh, sorry, data sources, uh, which include the TB presumptive register, the uh, TB laboratory register, and the TB treatment register. Um, from one of the facilities uh, that was visited, you can see that uh, do they think that out of the 364 presumptive TB uh, uh, cases from the data, all of them uh, had samples collected. But unfortunately, out of the 364 samples, patients with samples collected, only 285 had their specimens received uh, in the laboratory. So this was a very big gap uh, with respect to uh, samples received in the laboratory. That means this patient will not get uh, results at the end and it will be difficult to confirm uh, their case. So with the DICE assessment uh, reports, uh, the facilities were able to identify such gaps like this and then uh, take a decision on what improvement projects uh, that they need to carry out with guidance from uh, our program. Uh, so this is a picture of um, uh, one of the facilities where that assessment um, was conducted. So uh, all the data were collected in one facility in one area, and then uh, they were, and, uh, the assessors went through them. You can also see at uh, the extreme right, a 46, only 46% 46 um, success rate you know, in treatment between patients initiated and those that actually get, got uh, cured. So this tool was able to help to reveal uh, different gaps and problems that existed in, uh, in the different facilities. And this enabled them to come up with a, uh, a project, um, improvement projects and M statements on how to carry uh, it, the improvements. So um, some, of, one of the, some of the facilities that improved, implemented improvement projects um, have, based on the gaps that we identified, you can see um, a drastic improvement you know, between patient ref in patient referral records for clinic clinic one from 59% to 100%. You can also see specimen collection rates for clinic two, you know, uh, increasing from 79 to uh, 96% and so on and uh, so forth. So that goes to show uh, how uh, these uh, individual facilities uh, were able to implement, effectively implement improvement projects and use it to improve uh, uh, performance in their various uh, uh, facilities. So on, on the overall, for the five facilities uh, that uh, we are selected for the uh, pilot project, across the different uh, aspects of the diagnostic cascade, there were different levels of uh, uh, improvement. So you can see the blue bar, uh, the performance uh, uh, before, and then um, the green bar showing the uh, uh, performance after implementation of uh, TB click in Nigeria. So over the four month period, pilot period, 27% of, uh, uh, there was 27% uh, increase in total number of uh, uh, presumptive TB cases that were documented. There was also a percent, a, a percent uh, with specimen tested by experts, gene expert increased from 80 to 97%. 25% uh, increase in number of TB treatments that were initiated on treatment. We also had uh, a 91 to 98% uh, increase you know, in specimen 
uh, collection rate across uh, the four uh, uh, pilot facilities. So the success stories and the way forward, uh, as of 2020, 20, um, after the implementation of the pilot project, a uh, click has been taken up by the National TV program in Nigeria and has been incorporated into routine uh, site visits and assessments. And so due to the success recorded in this pilot project, CDC Nigeria uh, mandated uh, um, its partners to expand uh, in a phased approach TV implementation, uh, click implementation in their uh, facilities and states where they operate. So click is also being scaled up to other states in our own program um, to three uh, additional states and to support uh, with support from uh, CDC. Um, also, in order to integrate um, a TV click into routine CQI program, we in our program, we have established a state CQI multidisciplinary team uh, that comprises laboratory uh, staff, um, clinical uh, program staff, uh, as well as uh, uh, strategic information uh, MIE staff. What are the key messages here? Uh, it is observed already that gaps exist along the TB diagnosis cascade, which affect the quality uh, of uh, TB uh, services. So these gaps are usually not recognized because healthcare workers are providing TB services that are providing TB services are not working as a multidisciplinary team. So as a structured and mentorship-based program, CLIC help facilities to continuously improve the laboratory clinic interface as demonstrated from our presentation. So it, the, the CLIC brings together the ART uh, clinic staff, the TB, TB clinic and laboratory staff at the facility level as a team to address identified uh, gaps. And it is also very uh, important to note that improvements are easier achieved working together uh, as a team. It's also worthy to note that TV click implementation uh, provided opportunity for healthy competition, even among the facilities uh, that uh, participated or were supported in this uh, pilot project. Pro project. It, formed, it became like a collaborative with which through which they were able to share experiences and uh, successes uh, and challenges. If you can remember the CQI uh, slogan that said, you share uh, rec uh, uh, recklessly and um, uh, still, uh, sorry, I can't remember the other, the other part of it. So yes, we encountered some challenges. It was not an easy one though. Uh, we had um, challenges with uh, human resource staff uh, strength, uh, number and uh, workload that was not allowing uh, them to actually um, uh, carry out some of the activities. We also have challenges and problems with incomplete data and in the data entry errors at the facility level across the different uh, uh, and registers. We also have inadequate commitments on CQI activities at the facility level. And then also absence of facility CQI teams in some facilities. It was not easy for those uh, frontline workers uh, to actually uh, carry out this activity because they are not, they were not initially trained security team members. So we want to um, acknowledge the support from the National TB and Leprosy Control Program in Nigeria, the National AIDS and, uh, um, um, and STD Control Program, as well as the Benue State Government, where five of the facilities uh, in the pilot project was implemented. We also appreciate CDC Atlanta, CDC Nigeria, as well as uh, IRISEF and uh, ASLM, through whom the project was funded. Thank you and over. Thank you very much, Mr. Ike. You, you can take down your slides. A very comprehensive review of what has happened in Nigeria in terms of implementing the, the mentorship program and also using the, the toolkit. We'll move it now on to Uganda before we come to deal with some of the questions that are already coming through. Colleagues, keep those questions coming. We'll deal with them. And I will also ask AK and his team to continuously deal with some of the questions in the chat. Abdunur, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Francis. This is uh, Abdunur Nyombi. I work with the uh, National TB Reference Laboratory in Uganda. So we also had an opportunity as a National TB Reference Lab and National TB Reference Control Program to implement a uh, click uh, ECHO in Uganda. 
So, as Kenya uh, says, we still have uh, a TB burden in the world, and uh, the African region has the biggest contribution to this. And we can see that uh, this uh, issue was, was worsened with uh, COVID-19, that most of the countries are struggling to see that uh, we can recover the, the gains. So innovations like the uh, Cognitive Echo are some issues that we need to implement within our networks to see that we uh, improve our, our systems. So in Uganda, we implemented the uh, ITB Echo Click project uh, last year, which had uh, two major goals. Is to improve TB case finding, case, case finding and treatment initiation uh, among HIV positive and HIV negative persons with TB in Uganda, and also to improve time to TB uh, diagnosis and time to TB treatment initiation among HIV positive and HIV negative persons uh, with TB in Uganda. And uh, we had uh, uh, four objectives. And generally, uh, these objectives were around uh, reducing turnaround time in the cascade, uh, improving number of patients initiated on treatment. But most importantly, uh, our fourth objective was now to try to quant and quantify the value of providing states uh, based assessment alone, vis-a-vis -vis the states that we provide with uh, this assessment. I was saying that we had um, uh, six facilities where we only did the uh, this assessment at uh, uh, entry and follow up. And we had uh, six facilities where we did uh, this assessment, but this was followed up by two uh, learning sessions and um, weekly echo sessions for the period of uh, three months. And then all the facilities are uh, participated in the, in the exit assessment. So when we talk about uh, the echo sessions, basically uh, in these facilities, we used to have weekly uh, online um, uh, support where all the facilities that we are participating in the echo click could do log in for one hour in the week. And we had the uh, facilitators uh, guide them on uh, their projects. So they could present uh, their projects and then uh, receive feedback from the facilitators, but also other facilities that are, are part of the echo click. And then uh, we also had the opportunity to have uh, an expert present uh, uh, on a, a topic of interest uh, every week. And these topics could be in TB screening, could be uh, a lab test, laboratory testing, pediatric TB, MDR TB, among others. So what are the results that we uh, got uh, in this uh, implementation? Do you realize that? Uh... But for now, let's take some quick questions. Abdunur will allow you to try and wrap up later. We can take a few questions and then we'll get back to you when you, your connectivity stabilizes. Kindly uh, bear with us. Yeah, so I have already some few interesting questions coming in from quite a number of uh, colleagues here. And I will start with uh, one from Tefra Africa. I don't know, Tefra Africa is, is a gentleman or a lady. And he is indicating that he saw a treatment success rate of about 46% uh, during the presentation from AK. And he is asking whether this is referring to the drug susceptible TB cases treatment success rate uh, aggregated with the DRTB treatment success rate, or this is for drug susceptible or DRTB treatment uh, cases. Kindly uh, respond to that. Abdunur will get back to you. Kindly hold for about 10 minutes when your internet connectivity stabilizes, and we'll get back to you. You can take down your slides. Tef, I mean, uh, AK, over to you for, for that quick question that came to you. All right. Thank you so much uh, for this very uh, important question. Yes. Yeah, so the success rate for, was for both um, DRTB and uh, DSTB. So we did not actually classify, uh, categorize, or segregate, uh, disaggregate uh, both. Thank you, and over. Okay, just a kind follow-up. So if you did disaggregation, which of the two would go up significantly? Is it the drug susceptible TB cases that would have a higher treatment success rate or the DRTB, given the experience in Nigeria? It, it will be the, uh, uh, well, I can't tell now because I, uh, I don't have the data offhand but it may likely be for DRTB. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, 
our next question is coming in from Alpha Diallo. And Alpha is asking, he makes a comment first, very interesting data for improving specimen flow. And with respect to gaps observed between specimens collected and those tested, where there are other laboratories that actually perform first line diagnosis in the same facility. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for that very important question. Um, so we have a TB dot center. At the TB dot center, samples are collected and then patients are, are now asked to go to the lab to go and drop off these samples. So we have these patients lost, you know, in, in that uh, along that line between um, um, coming from the TB dot center and going to the laboratory. So it was what of some of the gaps we identified, and as such, we had to introduce uh, escorts, you know, in such facilities that have such gaps, so that uh, we will not have uh, those uh, patients missing between uh, the dot center and then coming to the laboratory to drop off their sample. Thank you, and over. I'll keep it with you for one more. Abdunur, I'll come back to you after the second question, but uh, you can be preparing to, to restart. So my first question before the second is uh, going to you still, AK. There is a note that we have an amazing difference in results between smears and expert analysis. And so what are your recommendations following this finding? Sorry, sorry, can you come again? Yes, so, so uh, Eric notes that there is an amazing difference in results between smear microscopy and gene expert tests. And what are your recommendations following this finding? Okay, so um, 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 from my understanding, the gene expert is a gold standard. And in Nigeria, um, gene expert, according to our treatment uh, TB uh, diagnostic algorithm, um, TB gene expert comes first for uh, uh, um, a diagnosis. Maybe follow up can then do um, um, microscopy, which is TB smear. So we can't really say because we are not comparing results obtained from uh, gene expert and that's obtained from um, a smear microscopy. So according to our algorithm in Nigeria, the very first uh, test uh, for diagnosis should be uh, gene expert. Thank you, over. Thank you, thank you. Let me just get one to Jami. Uh, Jami, there is a question on your overview slides, the first slide, and Ernest is asking that there, there, there seem to have been more people treated than those that were tested. Uh, given the, the cascade that you showed in your first slide, what could be the explanation to this? Yeah, so on the on the first slide, actually, um, if it's okay, I'll just share it really quickly um, so we can reference it. So can you see this, the, the slide? Yes, please. Go okay, on. so I think the question is, there are more treated than tested. That's because this tested is specifically referencing uh, um, a molecular WHO approved rapid diagnostic, but treatment can also be initiated based on, um, you know, a, a physician starts a person on treatment due to symptoms, um, you know, or it could have been from microscopy or something else. Perfect clinical diagnosis, and we oh. encourage that. Yes. Yeah. So also um, to add that in some facilities they still do uh, maybe um, chest X-ray and maybe such may not be captured in the laboratory data or register, rather. Very true, okay. Thank you for that addition. Uh, can I get back to Nyombi? Uh, if you are now stable, kindly get back to your presentation and we'll give you about five minutes to wind it up. Thank you, Abdunur. Sorry for that big... Uh... So I did that. I think that should be enough for me. So I was just saying that uh, we when we go to manage to get a uh, decrease in TAT, uh, especially in the lab TAT, uh, diagnosis TAT, and treatment initiation TAT. But what is special that uh, even uh, the facilities where TAT was was in, was not one of the improvement project, you could see that uh, they could do, uh, they achieved results in uh, in this area. 
but also in other improvements. And this, could, this is, was an issue of uh, the spirit, uh, spirit of benefits of uh, empowering health workers in situ. So they're able to uh, go and able, able to identify gaps and implement. Uh, another area that uh, which we look we, we looked at is that uh, we saw we, we saw uh, sorry 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 so comparing uh, 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 the states which had uh, uh, three candidates without those, with those that with, uh, without uh, echo we realized that uh, basically there was no improvement except uh, in one aspect of uh, uh, treatment initiation uh, at which decreased slightly uh, from 7.3 to 6.5 uh, days. So then another result that uh, we looked at was uh, an area of uh, increasing the number of TB patients that uh, initiate appropriate TB treatment in the uh, days and clinic, clinic facilities. So we saw that uh, in the entry uh, assessment uh, using the uh, days tool, we realized that um, a number of patients that uh, were being recorded in the TB clinic register were actually not initiated on treatment. However, on a follow-up assessment after supporting these facilities, we realized that uh, we had an imp a much improvement in uh, treatment initiation. However, what was uh, surprising that in uh, at, at this level, we could realize that uh, now the patients that were in actually in the put on treatment in the clinic were more than those that were in the TB lab register, the registers, and that uh, and that showed that uh, basically the documentation gap could not uh, allow us to measure exactly how many patients are are, are missing be between uh, diagnosis by gene expert to those put uh, on treatment. But generally, there was an improvement in treatment initiation. Uh, what are the some of uh, uh, the success that we saw in our implementation? We realized that uh, during this implementation, there was an improvement in the working relationship between the laboratory people and the clinicians because they had to come together and identify gaps and, and uh, design uh, improvement projects to, to work on them. And then uh, there was uh, adherence to NTOP uh, recommended patient flow, meaning that uh, patients uh, move from triage to uh, presumptive TB register, to the laboratory, and back to the clinic for initiation of treatment without uh, missing uh, any of those steps. And then of course, we uh, emphasize that uh, all the TAT at different levels improved in, this, in these facilities. And then uh, that led to uh, improving number of people that were put on treatment because the leakages at the different levels were being, uh, were be, were being uh, uh, tracked and, uh, and worked on. Uh, uh, during the implementation, we also uh, got uh, some of the challenges that we, 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 we managed to, to, to face. And one of them was uh, change management, especially in those facilities where we had to institute uh, changes in the patient flow as per the recommendation of the TB program. Some of facilities uh, uh, resisted that in the beginning, but they had uh, they to uh, cope up over time. Then uh, issues with missing data in the uh, tools that we're using, uh, the TB lab register, presumptive register, and the TB treatment register. And uh, this could be, it was issued to do with uh, either documentation gaps, but sometimes some facilities, were, some facilities were not using the right tools. And therefore that could also be a challenge. And um, uh, also staff attrition in facilities, especially when you have facilities that have, you've trained in the first uh, uh, learning session. And then when, when you now start implementing, you realize that uh, these facilities are not there and then you have issues too, in terms of uh, building capacity to take over the projects. Uh, so what are our steps as, as a country? So we plan to uh, have a partners dissemination meeting where we need to share these results with our partners in the country that are supporting the different regions in terms of TB control. But also uh, we plan to scale up uh, this uh, echo click in the other facilities, uh, like the days facility where we're implementing on the days and others. Then in terms of the uh, future plan, uh, the TB control program in Uganda is already uh, implementing uh, a quality improvement program under the TB case finding package. So in this TB case finding package, we have facilities that uh, we support them to improve TB uh, case finding, and we support them from the central team, team pro uh, pro by providing quarterly uh, uh, mentorships, but also uh, the DC support them on the monthly mentorship. So we think that uh, incorporating uh, echo uh, click in this support would be one of the most uh, cost effective and efficient way on how we could uh, achieve results by addressing the gaps in the uh, cascade. 
uh, let me end there by end by appreciating our, our partners, uh, CDC and AFNE that we've worked with in implementing this program. Over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nyombi. I know I am using the most reliable internet access point in the country and you were struggling, but I allowed you and I think you've done very well. We would have missed a lot if we had not allowed you to continue. Now, we still have a few quick questions or comments. That's a light one from me. And, and we will uh, move it on to the next questions. Do not also forget that uh, in the implementation of the, the clinic lab interface continuous quality improvement, there is a tool that is used and that is the DICE uh, toolkit. And at some point I will ask Stephen Jay to quickly highlight what it is that happens with that tool. But before we get there, uh, there, there is still another question. And I know TB treatment success rate is really a hot one because once we have uh, patients, we need to really move them to treatment success. And a 46% treatment success rate seems to be alarming. And Nicholas is still asking uh, that, uh, AK, if you could further clarify on what the 46 is representing. It, it didn't come out clearly. 46 treatment success rate, and this, we're talking about those who get cured and complete treatment put together. And, and, and 46 seems to be a low number. Do you want to quickly comment? Okay, over to you. Yeah, so like I said, uh, these are like uh, average from all the different individual facilities. Uh, so from the data abstraction, we were doing retrospective data abstraction. And as maybe, um, like I said, we did not disaggregate between um, the success rate for um, um, drug resistance TB and then uh, the, uh, the uh, DSTB as well. So uh, I, I, maybe if I get those details, uh, maybe from our database, I'll be able to share that. Uh, but for now, uh, I'm contacting my colleagues to see if uh, they can um, help with that. Uh, Emma, Emma, yeah, one of my colleagues has a hand up. Maybe he can he can help. Emma, you can go on. Thank you, Emmanuel. If you can go on, fit some kindly. Yeah, Emma, please go. On. And he be unmuted. All right. Thank you. Yes, I've been unmuted. Thank you very much, AK. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. So the, if you look at the casket again, we are looking at the uh, total number of uh, patients that were actually initiated on treatment. And the total, so that's from the initiated on treatment being 37, and the total that were actually uh, killed, you know, or completed the treatment program as 17. So that's how we got the 46% to start with. But let's bear in mind that at this point, the data we are looking at is at the point of data abstraction, which means that at that point, there are some people that are still on the treatment that are yet to complete the treatment. So the data that was presented was based on the number at the time of that uh, DICE assessment. So it is something that is not really showing after the, the most have completed the whole thing. So that data, the 46% was at the point, the data was actually attracted during the DICE uh, assessment. So I hope that helps. Thank you and over. Thank you very much. It does help because we, we then now know that the, the treatment success rate being referred to here is in context. It is not generally what we know that we do the assessment after the complete completion of the treatment uh, period. And, and, and in Uganda, we do that one year from initiation of treatment. And, 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 and so I think we now understand. Now, I have a question going to Abdunur before you lose your connectivity. Uh, Ernest is asking that the experience from Cameroon shows poor documentation of TB screening registers. And you, you guys have spoken to retrospective data collection. Is this the case in Uganda as well? Yes, indeed, uh, it is uh, a case in many of our facilities, but uh, there's been an improvement in terms of recording of patient, the presumptive register, where we currently struggle is having the results from the gene expert 
laboratory back in the, in the presumptive, but in terms of uh, entering the patient, it has uh, strongly improved. Okay, thank you, Abdunur. Uh, there, there is a question on waste management related to uh, TB diagnosis, and I'll throw it out there. Jamin, you can take the first uh, go at this, and then any other person can 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 add. Please advise on what recommendations are approved for the disposal of gene expert cartridges. So I don't know that I'm necessarily the best one to answer that, but I'll, I'll just tell you from the little bit that I do know um, yes. that you know there there's a there's a hazardous waste component to to the cartridges with some of the chemicals in it, and you know I've I've heard different countries you know that have had issues with disposing of them, and they need to have you know their their individualized plans for that. So I don't know um, you know necessarily that I could advise on that because it would depend on the country. But I'll let someone someone else tackle that. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, your hand is up, and and uh, colleagues, somebody you can still drop it in the chat if you have uh, a, a submission to make in regards to answering this question. Okay, please go on. Okay, so uh, thank you for that very important question. In Nigeria, we have a program that we are using to manage uh, waste. Uh, generated from molecular uh, testing, um, the um, real-time PCR machines. Um, so the guanidine tyrosinase GTC, which is a major component um, or hazardous component of the uh, reagents, is also contained in the genex part cartridge. So what we do, we incinerate at an incinerator of above 1,000 degrees centigrade. So in Nigeria, we have some uh, installed incinerators with the capacity to incinerate at above 1,000 degrees, because that is the only temperature above which or within which the glutamine and thiocyanate can be completely destroyed. So we are also reaching out with some cement factories. They have this cement clean, you know, with very high uh, temperatures, you know, so they can also help us you know, to manage uh, such waste. So beyond the TB um, uh, gene expert cartridges, even from the COBAS uh, uh, PCR machines, you know, the uh, hazardous liquid chemicals there, yeah, we are also managing it in the same manner. So that is the best way to manage it. Thank you, Andover. Thank you, thank you very much. And colleagues who may want to submit to this, please put it in the chat, chat box. Now, we're, we're almost coming to the end, and I will start my wrap up. Uh, a very informative uh, session for sure. Uh, in employing quality improvement, some of us are very passionate about quality improvement uh, because you cannot do anything without really having the desire to improve. But as we wrap up, I will start with uh, Steven. Steven is the programmer and he will do his wrap up, but just say something little about the DICE toolkit. Steven, in 30 seconds, please go. Yeah, thank you very much. The DICE tool is uh, the toolkit we use to collect the data for the project. And it has various Let me try and see if I can share my screen. Quickly. Can you see the screen? Yes, please. In 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 okay. 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. So we have the, the assessment profile where you, you enter the details of the of the facility and then the TV facility, the laboratory. We have the summary and analysis tab, which gives you aggregate level analysis. And uh, let me jump here, present you, present you register which where you actually enter the details about the register, the participants or the, the, the people you test for the for the TV, their ages, the gender, the specimen, and all these details about the test. So once these details are entering in here, the summaries are aggregated on these tabs. The data quality analysis tab, the table summary tab, and then the summary and analysis. You can actually download this tool from the Click website. 
because of time, we will not be able to get to that, but I will share the link to the website in the chat box so that you can you can go there and see and download all the resources for the project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. And uh, colleagues, we'll just ask for an extra two minutes from you. And I know that when we go into quality improvement, learning session one is where we unpack all the tools that I used uh, in the initiative that we're going to take and also the, the approach that is going to be used. And so some of these are the things that then go into our learning session one, I, I presume. Now, uh, I will go to the next uh, person, uh, Davis, you have your 10 seconds to do your wrapping remarks. Thank you so much, Francis. Um, what I can say is that um, with the implementation of uh, this project, uh, we've been able to support facilities. The ones that we are participating in the pilot study, really they performed well, uh, especially those that received the intervention. They were able to improve. We are seeing them improve with time. And uh, what Abdi uh, was saying is that this is now something that the country is considering to roll out, to have more facilities implementing this project. And for sure, you're able to see improvement, you're able to get data, and you're, you're able to use that data for planning. Uh, that's what I can say for now. Thank you so much, Jamie, CDC, CDC Uganda, and all the, the, the support you received from uh, uh, Nyombi and the team, uh, plus also the TP program. Thank you very much. And before we lose Nyombi's connectivity, Abdul Noor, your closing remarks in 10 seconds. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, CDC, and uh, SLM for giving us an opportunity to share our experience. Uh, indeed, we see this as an opportunity to improve uh, our service delivery, given that uh, our patients have been missing uh, in terms of accessing the care. So we look forward for more support from our CDC to, to, to implement this program to other facilities. Thank you very much. Thank you. And AK, 10 seconds. So I want to appreciate everyone for making our time um, to be in this uh, experience and sharing uh, uh, collaborative. I want to thank uh, ALS SLM for all the uh, support. I want to thank uh, CDC uh, for the support. And then uh, I say, let us keep up the good work we are doing uh, for the sake of the patients that we are managing at our various facilities and countries. Thank you, and over. And finally, Chami, mm. over to you for your closing remarks. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, SLM, for allowing us to present this. Um, I echo all the thanks that the others have given. Um, I just want to mention, um, we didn't have a chance to review the Click website. Um, uh, we we kind of ran out of time, but I encourage everyone to go to, to click.org and all of the tools, the dice, the dice toolkit, all the materials are available for download. And you can um, there's uh, there's guides to 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 instruct you on how to implement click and how to customize dice. Everything is there. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, from me, colleagues. Thank you so much for joining and making this session a success. We know that the implementation of any quality improvement is never starting here and stopping there. It is a continuous process. And so for the facilities that have started the implementation of this initiative, kudos to them, but we encourage them that they should continue. And those that will take it up, reviewing your performance and making sure that you fill the gaps to, to, to get better with performance is a continuous process and it should never be looked at as a project. Uh, as we wind up, the, the session materials will be made available to you as usual on our platforms. And also those who may need to access their certificates, the code are on the screen. You can take that code and go to the ASLM Academy website and you should be able to get your, your slides, I mean your certificates. Until our next session from me and the team on our side, do have a blessed day, evening, and afternoon, wherever you're joining us from. Thank you and over. <laughs>